Hello and welcome. This is the Catch Light Show. I'm your host, Bob McClenahan, and I have my guest on here today, Alex. I'm Alex Rubin. Welcome. He is. And a uh, fantastic photographer, kind of a new guy uh, for the area, but um, from what I can tell, he's, he's kicking it. And um, I love his images. And um, so anyway, we'll kind of get to know him a little bit more here as the show goes on. Um, but uh, you know, I just kind of want to let you know about the show a little bit. Uh, first, or the, the third Monday of every month, four o'clock p.m. Pacific time. That's when we're here, so you can watch us live. Um, you can join our vast studio audience if you want to here at the Toot Suite Studios, and you can also uh, view it online after the show on YouTube's. I think. Um, so there's always there's always that option. Of course, it's not interactive, and you cannot ask questions during the YouTube show, but um, you can do it, um, post your questions uh, to us prior or during the show, and we will definitely, and we have a couple, so, and we will we will get into that a little bit, so. Another thing we want to talk about, thank you to Cornerstone Sellers for the 2012 Napa Cab, which we are enjoying very much right here, cheers. It is actually very, very good, and um, thank you for being a client. And, um, so, let's let's get the let's get the two questions out of the way first. All right. So I had a guy who um, wrote in, and he wanted to know a little bit more about. He has a cropped sensor camera. Yes. And he wants to know. We're getting technical, just off yes, the bat. Ab- just, just. Well, all right. Absolutely. Um, we can get as geeky as. All right. As, we as can geek out. On, all right. Absolutely. Because good. You know, we we never know who's going to be watching. So he's got a cropped sensor camera um, on Nikon. It's DX. Okay. I don't know what what do they call it on the Canon side. Um, the cropped sensor camera. Yeah. Uh, you got the Rebel. You got I mean, the, the they call sixty. It, uh, but don't they have a special name for it? Just the crop. Oh, I'm not sure. All crop sensors. Oh, okay. Anyway, so he has a crop sensor camera, and he wants to know about the advantages or the disadvantages uh, to going full frame. Main advantages is the beautiful blur that you get. So. Uh, you're you're gonna actually be able to have your 35 millimeter lens be a 35 and look so much more gorgeous in the focal range. So that's why you have a lot of these video people uh, switching to DSLR because your out of focus areas are just so much more beautiful on a full frame camera. Yep. That I mean that's true. the main that's the main thing that I see. I mean you do get some ISO, some you know your sensor's bigger, so you have more pixels, so you can print an image bigger. Right. But, I mean, the capabilities, I mean, I don't have my iPhone on me, but that thing takes great pictures these days. I mean, it's shocking yeah, yeah, how far cameras have come. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, yeah, so so uh, going to full frame, it's going to cost you. You know, the camera bodies are a little bit more. The lenses are more. Oh, yeah. Because you're going to have yeah, to have special yeah. lenses yeah. for full frame cameras, and they're often more expensive and bigger. Heavier. Heavier. Yeah, more, um, more insurance needed. More insurance. So, um, but yeah, you're going to get um, uh, usually better ISO capabilities. Um, well, let's see. Anything else? What else? I think that's probably it. Um, you know, I mean, if, if you have the money, if you have paying clients, I'd say that it's worth yeah, going. I really think it's going, uh, going uh, the full frame. You're investing in lenses as you become a photographer. So. Right. You know, you lenses. don't want to have lenses that are meant for crop sensors, right? Because eventually, hopefully, you're going to be successful enough to where you have all full frame, and you know, you're not rebuying a lens a year later. Right. So, uh, I, I definitely highly recommend full frame. That's the only way I shoot. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I started off with a um, with a with a Nikon cropped camera, a Nikon D three hundred back in the day. Nice. And I always kind of assumed that I would be going full frame someday, even though I bought that camera then. Um, and so the lenses that I purchased were all full frame lenses. Yeah. You can put a full frame lens on a cropped frame camera body. Exactly. But you can't necessarily go the other way. Um, so anyway, so... It, but I think I think it is absolutely well worth it um, if you have paying clients, um, if you have the or if you just have the dough, 
uh, definitely go with. <laughs> if you have like, if you have a real job, for example, and you like photography, that is that is you know, also that is also just very get the full the frame, pony up. Yeah, uh, you know, that, and that's that was the case. You know, because I was before I became a real full time photographer. You had a real I, job, I had right? A real job, and during right. that time when I had a real job, that was the time when I was stocking up on all my camera equipment and yep. buying all the all the lights and all the cameras <laughs> and all that kind of stuff because that's when I had money. Now that I'm a photographer, I don't have any money anymore. Yeah. So that's, but I don't need to buy any more equipment. Although, interestingly enough, little side note, another side note, um, I have a. You probably don't care, but I have a Nikon D810. Okay. Coming tomorrow. Oh, nice. Which is I'm Nik- a Canon guy. I don't even know what this thing is. So it sounds like a fancy camera. It is. It's it's Nikon's latest and greatest camera body. Nice. Um, so it uh, it will be my primary body. Uh, my Nikon D800E will become my backup. I am selling my Nikon DF. There you go. Well, we can put an ad out right now. That there you go. If you want a Nikon, for sale. If you want a Nikon DF, just let me know. Uh, so what do we? What's the other? What was the other uh, question we got here? The other question was, um, I guess the guy um, he was wanting to know how he can reduce the noise in his images. Well, uh, there's a th- eight ways to answer that question. Um, I use Lightroom, and that, as, uh, yeah, and, and can that's we, pretty much that's pretty okay. much that's pretty much the entire question. So I don't have okay. any specifics. Yeah, any specifics. Other than that. Um, so we'll have to go through all. I use Lightroom ways. as my primary image processing source. Um, so you know they have some noise reducing software that, for what I do, works for ninety nine percent of the images. You know, occasionally you're going to need to bring in another product mm-hmm. uh, through Photoshop that you know can do uh, you know Noise Ninja. There's a number of products out mm-hmm. there. Um, also. You know, fast lenses. You know, I I mostly shoot fixed focal length lenses, um, 35 millimeter one four for Canon. That's my like my main lens. I, I love, love it. I love that lens. It's fast. It's sharp, and uh, you don't have to go as high in ISO because your your lens goes down to one four. Um, so you know, that's kind of I guess one way to look at it. You know, you can get a nicer newer camera. And I also find, I don't know if this is true, I've, as you shoot a camera more, the more actuations you get on it, the more noise you get. And I don't know if this is true, but I've uh, sometimes felt that. Wow. That if I'm like at 100,000 shutter frames, I feel like my... I don't think you've ever kept a camera that long. Oh, yeah. (laughs) I've I've got a couple, uh, I've got a couple with with 100,000 on them. Wow. Um, That you get... uh, the sensor gets noisier, but that could totally be. Uh, that's a, that's probably a Canon thing. That doesn't that doesn't happen. Oh yeah, noise. right. Nikon's. Well, uh, just get a Canon, and then you don't have to worry about noise. <laughs> and that's the the main that's the main answer. <laughs> right. <laughs> Sorry. That's all right. I'm trying to be funny, and and you know I can't get the response from the audience as well. So right. if I'm not, it's fine. It's so totally fine. have you uh, another thing kind of popped into my head because it's something that I've been contemplating. Um, uh, have you ever thought about going the mirrorless route? You know, there's a lot of people talking about it these days. Yeah. And uh, I'm talking to you, Gary Fong, right there. No. Mm. Um, but, you know, like Sony has some really nice products right. out there. I haven't. I love, I mean, I have a Hassan block that I shoot still. So it's film, and I love the shutter noise it makes. <laughs> I mean, you really... Yeah. You, you know, I, I'm a little bit old school. I went to yeah. art school. Um, I know how to how to print, uh, you know, uh, color and both black and white, which is like a skill that's almost no one uses anymore. Sure. But I, I haven't. Is that something you've... I've kind of been thinking about it just because I would love to have a camera that I can more easily take with me. Yeah. Um, just because I don't necessarily want to bring along a Nikon D800 with 70 to 200 lens on it, you know, on on my vacation. Yeah. Um, You just got to select when you vacation. Yeah. And uh, I pick two lenses and that's all I can bring. I, that's what I do. I I went to, I went to Cancun with one lens. Nice. Uh, What'd you bring? 35, one, four. That's what you bring. The 35. Um, That's another advertisement for the 35 millimeter lens. I love that lens. Um, Yeah. Oftentimes I will shoot an entire event. I can shoot an entire event oh, yeah. with a 35 one four, no problem. Me too. Um, if I 
And um, I, when I shot the um, uh, for auction Napa Valley last month, um, I had two camera bodies, one with 35.14 and one with 85.14, and I would just 35.85 is I, beautiful. You know, I mean, you you can get you can get everything. Yeah. And you can get everything. Everything comes out beautiful. And it's so much sharper <laughs> than you know, like young photographers often. I mean, my first good lens I ever had. You know, I probably made a hundred thousand dollars with this lens, twenty-four to seventy, two point eight. I hate that lens. And it was so beautiful at the time for me. You know, it was so beautiful. I yeah. thought it was sharp. Yeah. And then you get a thirty-five millimeter, and you're like, I never have had a sharp picture on this other camera or on this other lens. Yeah. Um. But yeah, speaking of that's the, funny because the, the 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 Nikon version seems to be the same way. I have the Nikon, uh, twenty-four to seventy, two yeah. eight. I I dislike that lens so much. And because it is not sharp, it's not no. And um, I mean that is supposed to be their, their it's it's, professional, it's top of the line. Yeah, supposedly. but it is just not very good, and I never ever ever use it. It's, Canon has a new version, and it's yes. good. It actually yeah. is. It's surprisingly sharp. Yeah. Um, speaking of the the mirrorless, really quick. So I I uh, did a shoot last year uh, for Starbucks corporate, and I was shooting Oprah, and they had a film crew there. And there was a moment where I had to be quiet. I could make no shutter noise. Yeah. And I literally captured some frames on my iPhone that were delivered to clients. They didn't use any of them. But, like, there are moments yeah. when, when having, you know, like, as a photographer, you have to improvise. And I think that's one of the biggest skills that uh, yeah. it's creative problem solving. Right. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think one of the biggest advantages of going mirrorless is the fact that you can have a totally silent shutter. Yeah, exactly. And so if that's shoot, the that's the main advantage I'm seeing when we're talking about it. Here. Yeah, I mean, if I don't know if I would necessarily shoot an event with it, but I, I assume that it's possible. And if you were shooting like a church wedding where it's quiet, and I don't know about the Canons, but the my Nikon, I mean, it makes a pretty good pretty good click when yeah. you hit the shutter. Yeah. Um, the, you have to get the sound, the sound blip. Yeah, I guess so. I, my gosh, that I know, I'm like such a dork. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> you know, and but there are times when you need to be quiet. It's true. And um, if you were shooting like on set, you yeah, know, like during we during were talking filming, about shooting the film festival before okay, this, right? And uh, so that requires an absolutely silent shutter. Yep. And so I could I could definitely see it being an advantage to, in that sort of situation as well. So. Um, now you mentioned um, your you shot for you said Starbucks. Yep. But Starbucks was with Oprah. Oprah yeah. Was so I it. shot. Uh, so who, so who are shot, some of the other clients? Uh, let's see. I've done work for Starbucks. Uh, I've done work for Expedia, Boeing, um, Dairy Gold. They're not around here. Tons of wine industry uh, folks in Napa from Luna, Boise. Um, you know, really a variety of corporate uh, clients. What we were doing for Starbucks was the Tavana campaign. So I don't know mm. if you guys have heard, but Oprah has her own chai tea, and it's delicious. And I was the photographer there uh, documenting the creation of her own flavor. Okay. So uh, that was uh, that was fun. Very cool. Very fun. Yeah, I'm sure it was. I'm sure it was. And you got a selfie with Oprah? I did not get a selfie with Oprah. I felt a little awkward I know. asking I know, I for that. Too. But uh, she is... I, Honestly, just as incredible of a person as you would think. I mean, sometimes, like, as a photographer, you meet celebrities. We were talking about this. You meet people that, you know, maybe aren't as cool as you would think. And, man, she is the real deal. Yeah. Really is. You know, yeah, I'm sure, you know, obviously you do too. Uh, but I get the opportunity to shoot a lot of celebrities. And so I have the opportunity to, to take the selfie with the celebrities and, and shoot that on the Instagram. But I, I always do you have any? I'd love to see some um you know, yeah. I, I don't okay. because I'm, it's kind awkward. Of, I'm kind of embarrassed. Yeah. I'm I'm, I'm, I'm trying, embarrassed by the word selfie. Well honestly. I, I I try to be the professional photographer and I and yeah, not I try be, to be too, but and not, and we're not, drinking wine on a, was, on a Monday. And, so, well hey. It is Napa. It is Napa. Uh in I, I, I just I just feel awkward about doing that because I want to be the professional photographer. I don't want to be you know the average fan, uh, yeah. even though I do have the access to do that. Um, although I did I did have a, I did do a selfie moment. Well, it wasn't really a selfie, but I did do uh, the opportunity with um, 
um, a 49er football player. Well, Vernon Davis? Yeah. I I've heard of Vernon. him. I don't know. Uh, but the, the guy is from Seattle. I'm a fan of the world champion Seattle Seahawks, <laughs> just so we're, you know, the, the, the correct name. Right. Just right. so we're, it, we're all aware that, of the... Is that what they're... Is that the world they're, champion Seattle Seahawks, right. that's the name. Okay. You know, just so we're... See, we were friends... Now we're not. No, no. no, no, no. <laughs> hey, you work. got second place this year, all right? Second place. Yeah, so got anyway, so the, uh, let's, let's go ahead and look at some of the images that you have here on your website. Um, so can we, if we can switch to that camera. And uh, so this is some of your work um, that you've done for, obviously, your, your wine-related clients yeah. here in town. Um, you said, you said uh, so Boisse, obviously a major person here to know um black stallion i've done work for ridge oh uh, yeah that's, that's right ridge. a cover i did for uh simple wine news it's a russian wine magazine mm -hmm. and uh paul draper and his pooch mm -hmm. and how did you shoot that because you brought some looks like you brought some studio there's, lights there's some some off-camera flash going yeah. on so uh i tend to work uh I love natural light, but I also love creating light and, uh, what else? Oh, you know, bringing lights on location and, and creating kind of images that are going to, you know, kick it up a notch. Yes. That reminds me. Keep talking about this. Cause let me, okay. let me, let me find, let me find something here. Cause I, there was a lesson that I wanted to, to, uh, do here since we, since we have time. But so keep so, talking here, go, go through, go through some of your images and, and, and talk about some of those. So, um, you know, I love the details um, that that you come across uh, and images that people wouldn't always look for. Um, everything from, you know, this is more standard kind of studio photography. Mm -hmm. It's something that uh, we both do. Um, this is an event. Uh, that's John Charles. JCB right there. At, uh, at Buena Vista, which... Uh, is just a fabulous, fabulous spot. Shot with Such 30, a great history. Shot with the That's shot 14. with the 3514 right yep, there. I, uh, I recognize What that. else isn't on this? That's shot with the 3514 right there. Um, so love playing with light. Um, that's up at Artessa, which yep. is a, sure. a vineyard around here. Just gorgeous location. Um, a, a nice fall morning. I, I kind of, me and my wife picked... Napa and Sonoma as our paradise and it, it really is and I had done some work down here and really chose to move my business here because I love it I love mm -hmm. everything about wine country from uh, now why couldn't you do that up in the Washington wine country and stay out of state of my competition without offending Washington wine <laughs> how do I answer this question all right I think I think you've said enough now Red Mountain in Washington is producing some beautiful varietals, but I'm I'm uh, I drink mostly Californian and Italian wine, honestly. Okay. So, um, I love it. That's that's one of those questions that uh, mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. harvest uh, harvest is big. Always fun. Yep. Um, you get to get up at uh, what three in the morning, you know, right. uh, get some lights out there. Um, just the textures. This is kind of a piece of the series that I've been kind of working on. Um, love macro work, mm -hmm. and some of the colors that you get in the vineyards are just spectacular. Oh, absolutely. In November, it's just it's, it's, yeah. it's amazing. You really shouldn't travel if you live here that month because it's so beautiful. Yeah, you know what's funny is that you know um, summer in Napa is when most of the tourists come, and it's actually probably about the ugliest time of the year to come. I don't I know. I don't know. I love I mean, when not, the vineyards are... Hey, I, I'm times. from Seattle. I love Seattle and all, but it's beautiful we here. Have, we have, it we really we, is we beautiful We have blue here. skies. Yeah. Awesome. Probably, yeah. This time of year, though, I mean, my friends in Seattle that are watching <clears> right now, it is... Uh, I'm sure it's gorgeous there right now. No, it's it's green there. It, it It's it, always green there, right? It is always green there. It's always green uh, and gray. It's true. So. Well, you, the, the color variation within gray is spectacular. You have no oh, idea okay. how many grays there are. <laughs> <laughs> and as all my Seattle photographer friends know all about it. Yeah. Should we, should we move on to glass number two before we go, go too far here? Oh, yeah, absolutely. No, help yourself. Help yourself. We are, I'm filling you up first, Oh, yeah, sir. no, that's cool. So um, one thing that I, I wanted to talk about, um, it, it kind of came up in a photo shoot um, last week. 
I was hired to do this, um, do some portraits of the winemakers and the owners and that sort of thing for this uh, brand called um, Memento Mori. Okay. Um, it's a very culty wine, um, very meaning it's very expensive and very good. Um, but they have a new website coming out and they wanted to, um, they needed, basically they're putting together a whole new website. So they needed images of the bottles, they needed images of, you know, of their vineyards. Full collateral. The, the whole thing, right? Yeah. So I got there and of course, when could they meet? You know, 1 p.m. in the middle of a vineyard uh, in order to do their, their, their portraits. Now, as you know, that is not the best time to be shooting people outside. So, um, this there is we image number one of straight out of the camera of the image that uh, we took. You can see very harsh shadows and bring it forward like that. There we go. Tip it uh, down. Tip it. Down. Can you still see it? Does that work? There we go. Got the, you can probably you can probably see the glare of the Napa River uh, in in there. So that you know it's not it's not a great shot in by any means. You can see that there's very harsh shadows on him. Um, and so what did I do? I ran out to my box of goodies and I grabbed a a um, I don't even know what you call it, but it's basically scrim. Uh, yeah, um, and it was it, so it's it's like um it's it's a very large piece of white cloth-ish yep. material, but the, the, the light shines through it, and it uh, filters the light. And there so we go. this is the other image. This was the second image with the little scrim. I call it a sunshade, a uh, sun bounce, I think, or whatever. Um, and anyway, so you can kind of see there that it gets rid of the harsh shadows. It's not a fantastic portrait by any means, but given the circumstances, that's pretty good for one, one o'clock on a Tuesday. You know, I mean, it yeah. made it, it made a huge difference. It made a, a, an image that I could actually deliver. Yes. The other image, I cannot, I cannot give that to a client ever. You know, uh, no matter how much Photoshop you do, <laughs> it, it, it's just, it's just not, it's just not going to look good. Let's not talk about the guy's posing. Wow. Well, um, yeah. But. Like I said, this was I thought it was just a good example yeah. of things that you need to have. You know, um, when I was when I was young, my dad, who was he was a photographer, and he got me interested in okay. photography. But he wasn't a professional photographer. He was just a guy with a camera, right? Um, and he always said, "Shoot during the day. Shoot outside. Everybody looking into the sun." Dad, I'm sorry. That is exactly the opposite of what you want. Uh, you never, ever, ever want to shoot. I think Kilmet Newton said something similar. I'm not. Who's that? I don't even know. Oh, okay. Sorry. I'm a, I'm fine art trained. So I yeah, I, I go back through the. I'm Jim, McCle he's a, he's I'm Jim a, McClenahan trained. So he's, uh, he, yeah, exactly. Shoot in the sun, middle right. of the day. That's the time. Uh, no, he's a fashion photographer, mostly shot black and white. And I think he made a quote basically saying there's one light source. And it's the sun, and it's at a uh, – God, I'm, I'm horrible. Anyway, someone with Wikipedia can, can Google this and send us in the exact quote. But it's one it, – the sun is the only light source, and it's at a certain angle. Yeah. That was what he said, and that's what he shot. Yeah. Uh, you know, basically, as photographers, while we don't ever get to choose when we shoot, it seems, um, Especially, you know, when it becomes, you know, shooting portraits, it's 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 when they're available, it's when they're in town or whatever else. So you got to make do with the best you can. Um, but, you know, the most beautiful light is within an hour of sunrise and within an hour of sunset. And that's and if we could. So pretty much what you do is you shoot during those hours and you edit in between um, and do your bookkeeping yeah. and, and everything else. That's why I'm always here in the afternoon. Um, because that's when the light is horrible and it's boring. It's it's either harsh shadows, uh, it's boring blue skies, you know. So anyway, we're we're kind of getting off topic a little bit, but I did I did want to share that because I thought I thought that was a well, perfect, it's good you had perfect, it in your car. A, a perfect example. Well, you were prepared for. It. I I knew that they were going to want to do some shots in the vineyard. Yeah. Because they are winemakers. 
It's kind of um, where the photos happen. It's, it's where the photos happen. So I, I, we actually done a, a few setups. One was in the barrel room. See, so I have delivered. Yep. There's, so, there's Paul, ba Paul Draper in the uh, barrel room on, uh, on our go. screen there. Yeah. So um, done that. And that because that was literally at you know that was at 1 p.m. and I was yep. like, where can I get really nice light? Yeah. And so is that is that know, shot with a with strobes or is that a, a that is natural that's open natural door. light? They uh, yeah. if if any of the the visitors out there have been to Ridge, um, their uh, their southern location, not the Hillsburg one. Um, they have a really awesome cellar. I want to say it dates back to the 1850s, and uh, massive doors you can open. So, so we're probably talking, you know, an eight foot by eight foot natural light soft box, whatever you want to call it, really coming in lighting him. So, um, when you can work with natural light uh, in ideal conditions, it's awesome. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, one of the things about the barrel room is that you can you can control it a little bit more. Yep. Either with an open door or with a, um, you know, with strobes. Um, not to toot my own horn, but I'm going to tomorrow. So, so tomorrow I, I am shooting um, a uh, GQ uh, shot with, nice. with with Cameron Hughes. You know, really? Cameron, Cameron Hughes, the yeah. winemaker. So tomorrow, so we have for GQ. We have we have three we have very three nice. we have three locations set up. One in his office in Calistoga. We have another one in his one of one of his barrel rooms at Laird. And then we're gonna be shooting in the vineyard at um Domaine Chandon. Oh beautiful. So we have we have three locations um and those vineyards at Domaine Chandon are yeah, absolutely. gorgeous. Absolutely. So we're uh that that's on on oh, honestly I'm I'm nervous. That's this is like a big a big you shoot. should be that's, that's like it's a you big should be nervous. nervous. Yeah thank you very much. So um <laughs> that's and, like uh, how you know you're you're working. Yeah, you know, like if you're nervous before a shoot, like yeah. do, you, do you still get nervous during yes. shoots? Yes. How many years I, have you I been doing this? I've been shooting uh, for over ten years on my own, not working a real job, so to speak. Okay. So uh, I've been doing this quite a while, and I I feel like I think when you're ever doing anything where you constantly are pushing yourself, you should be nervous. You know, you should get some nerves before a shoot. Um, you know, and then once you're doing it, you like forget about it. But like the prior, you should be nervous. I think. Yeah. I mean, especially like young photographers when you're going out there, you're gonna be nervous. Like you're getting paid. Like, yeah. You know, and and for you know, we we do both commercial work. You do a little wedding work. I come from a background of wedding work. When you're getting paid, you know, five or six thousand dollars to go shoot something, you you should you should be nervous about making sure you deliver an awesome product. I think it builds your uh, builds it up and it, it makes you perform better. I think you're right. Um, still nervous, uh, but so because yeah, you're right. You know, I mean, I, sometimes I feel like okay, you know, I'm 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 still relatively new at this. I'm still learning. I'm still mm -hmm. learning. It's it's not the photography that I'm learning. It's business. Yeah, the business of photography. Oh yeah, That's, which is I mean, you know, and, some of the um, some of the worst photographers I know are the most successful. And that's, that's the nature of, you know, like there's people yeah. who in this industry, it is, yes, images are great, but if you don't know how to sell those images, if you don't know how to package your services, if you don't know how to brand yourself, you're not going to succeed. And so really trying to bring, you know, marketing, um, and, and really like showing what you want to shoot, I think is one of the most important things I've learned through my career. Because I've shot everything. Like, does your cat need a photo? Because Dude, I'm ready. You know, like, I, know, I was I know. a young photographer, and, and I've hustled, so, and I've said yes to a lot of things that I say no to now. I, I, I know, know I know we're out of time, but i got to ask you the question. Yes. Maybe we could just talk about this offline. But do you market yourself as very specific, you know, as just to wineries, just doing a specific type of thing, or is it in general? Because I know you have your, your wine work, you have your wedding work. You know, I mean, is it is it smart to market yourself to one very specific sort of photography that you want to do? I think that's the smartest thing, and you have a someone who's very uh, hip hypocritical speaking to you because I have everything, I do everything, and I've I've done a lot of stuff. So the more uh, I guess, the more I grow as a photographer, the more I find what. I really excel at and the more I try to only show that and 
you know, I recently uh, redid an extensive amount of my wedding work and am only marketing my wedding work to a very specific clientele. And you also have a specific, my, a specific website. Yeah, I have a separate wedding. wedding website. I find with commercial work that... You, brides don't care. Brides <laughs> want to see wedding work, and commercial clients would never want to see a wedding, in yeah. my mind. So I really... I keep them separate. I love them both, and they both uh, are very special to me. Um, I do, you know, maybe 65% commercial, 40 or 35% uh, wedding work, but I, you know, came from a place where at one time in my life I did 90% wedding work. Mm. So I love, I love them both and have a strong passion. Um, but I, I really do think that you need to show what you want to shoot. And I've never heard a photographer who uh, was like, you should be more general. Yeah. You know, you should, you should, you should make that a little bit more loose. Right. All right. Well, heck, we could, I could talk for another half hour here. That really um, flew. I know you're, you're a fun it, guy. It always, it always does, and, and yeah. Anyway, but I'm glad you came by early so we could we could talk beforehand, and you can have to stick around. I will. We'll, we'll have to finish the bottle. Okay. Uh, We're so anyway, there so anyway. thank you very much for uh, for watching the the Catchlight Show. Um, again, it's the third Monday of every month, 4 p.m. Pacific time. Watch us live on the Toot Sweet Network, and uh, thank you very much for coming. Cheers, sir. It's an awesome pleasure meeting you. See you next time. Thank you. <laughs>